Now there are some claims that are made by Christians about Jesus. And amongst those claims are that Jesus is God incarnate, that Jesus is actually God, and that Jesus is the Son of God. And these are the two claims that I want to spend the last few minutes examining. Just through, through, from the point of view of reason. And how it cannot possibly be truth. It cannot possibly be truth. Because if we mean by truth something that we can reason and establish to be a fact, then by definition, it can't be something that contradicts itself. And this is very interesting because if you get a Jew, a Christian and a Muslim, and probably if you've got a Hindu and a Sikh sitting around the table together, and we agreed to make a definition of God that we all agreed about, nearly everybody would agree that there is one God, that God is infinite, God is self-sufficient, and God is immortal that God is all-knowing. So we probably all of us agree that there is a living, existing, self-sufficient, eternal, immortal, all-omniscient God. And every Jew and Christian would definitely agree about that and probably most Hindus and Sikhs would agree about it as well. That's how we define God. We define God as being all-knowing, all-seeing, all-hearing. We define God as being eternal. We define God as not needing anything, being free from all wants and free from all needs, self-sufficient and immortal. In other words, God never dies. He's ever living. He's the first before whom there is none and He is the last after whom there is none. Then let us define man. Man, by definition, does not fit those characteristics. Man, by definition, is born and dies. That makes us mortal. Man, or to use the politically correct term, you know, humans, men and women, right? Okay? Humans, human beings, they're born and they die, so they are mortal by definition. They are needy, meaning we need to breathe, we need to eat, we need to drink. We have many other needs, but we have needs, so we are not, therefore, self-sufficient. We are limited in our knowledge. We are limited in our knowledge. We are not all-knowing and all-seeing and all-hearing. So therefore, what defines a human being is very different from what defines a God. Or what defines the God, the Creator. Now, how can something be two opposites at the same time? How can God be eternal and immortal and be temporary and mortal at the same time? How can God be self-sufficient and needy at the same time? How can something be all-knowing and ignorant of things at the same time? It doesn't mean anything. By definition, to say God became a man actually has no meaning. It's not something that can be a truth ever, because it's not something that can ever be proven. It's not something even comprehensible in terms of definition. It's like saying the square became a circle, but still was a square. Yeah? The square became a circle, but was still a square. That's what we're saying. God is defined by certain things. And man is defined by certain things, and those things are opposite. You can't be the same, you can't be the two things at the same time. In fact, that will be, should be enough for anybody to realize the absurdity of the claim that Jesus is God. Jesus is perfect God and perfect man. It doesn't mean anything. You can't be perfectly knowing everything and perfectly not knowing everything at the same time. And for someone who often says, well, God can do anything, of course there are many replies to that. One of them is to ask, answer it with another question. Well, can God do something evil? 
if he is a good God, and he is a God who is all good, can he do evil? If God is all-knowing can he, and, and God is wise, can he do something stupid? No, God has certain attributes. God has a certain nature that defines God. So by definition, that's what defines God. If God is immortal, he does not die. If God is self-sufficient, he does not eat and breathe. And we have too many descriptions in the Gospel of Jesus, of his mortality. Of course, according to Christian theology, he dies on the cross. He's killed. Can you kill God? According to the Bible, Jesus doesn't know things. He's ignorant of things. He is weak. He forgets. He's human. He eats. He walks in the marketplace. He breathes air. This is Jesus. There's one amazing example that is so clear. It's the famous example of the fig tree that one day Jesus is riding on a donkey. Think about it. Does God ride on a donkey? And he sees a fig tree and he feels hungry. So God is hungry. And he wants to eat some figs. So he goes to the fig tree and he finds there's no figs on the tree. That means from the donkey to the fig tree, he couldn't see whether there were figs or not. Is that someone who sees everything? He didn't even know there were no figs on the tree. And it becomes more surprising because when there were no figs on the tree, it says, because it wasn't the season for figs. So he didn't even know when the seasons were. And he's supposed to be the creator of the seasons. So, we've got a God riding on a donkey who gets hungry, okay, who doesn't know whether there's figs on the tree and doesn't even know the seasons of the figs, right? And when he sees there's no figs on the tree, he gets so upset, he curses the fig tree and it withers and dies. Now, that is truly extraordinary. Because most Christians would say in defense is that, no, all of that was the human side of Jesus. The human side of Jesus was his riding on a donkey, his not knowing, his feeling hungry. But the God bit of Jesus was when he cursed the fig tree and it withered and died. Now, the extraordinary thing is that you have the, the, the divine side of Jesus, therefore, acting upon the human side and depending upon it. What does this mean? How can this ever be a truth? 